Adolf Hitler, Berlin, September 30th, 1942. There was a time when the Jews in Germany also laughed at my prophecies. I do not know whether they are still laughing today or whether they have been cured of their laughter, but take my word for it, they will stop laughing everywhere. Colonel William Quinn, US 7th Army, Dachau, April 29th, 1945. There, our troops found sights, sounds and stenches horrible beyond belief. Cruelty so enormous as to be incomprehensible to the normal mind. Barack Obama, Auschwitz, March 22nd, 2013. If you come here a thousand times, each time your hearts will break. For here we see the depravity to which man can sink. The barbarity that unfolds when we begin to see our fellow human beings as somehow less than us less worthy of dignity and life, we see how evil can, for a moment in time, triumph when good people do nothing. It is estimated that over 11 million people were killed during the Holocaust, equivalent to the entire population of Portugal. Six million of these were Jews. The Nazis killed approximately two-thirds of all living Jews in Europe. An estimated 1.1 million children and babies were murdered during the Holocaust. It doesn't seem real until you're there. No matter how many times you read about it or how many films you watch about the Holocaust, it just doesn't seem to really hit you until you're there and then that's when you realise that it's not just a fictional event that is used in TV and books, it actually did happen. Yeah, it was a pretty massive thing. We were all just completely overwhelmed being there. It was really hard to take in kind of the scale on which it had happened because it took us a whole day to do it and we first went to the work camp and then we went to the death camp and it's just, it was a massive amount to take in in one day. It's an experience I don't think that you can prepare yourself for. Like, no matter how much you know about the Holocaust, actually going there is a totally different experience. When you see it for yourself, that's, that's when it really hits home. When they opened it, they made the gas chambers specifically to kill people. Like, a, they made it so that they, so that they could use them as killing houses. Because in Camp 1, the gas chamber was a makeshift one out of a bunker. But in Camp 2, the amount of people they, they could kill in those things was incredible. The feeling of it when you're there, you get a real understanding. For, it makes it real. It makes it, it really hits home. And seeing things like the ash pools where they just, every single, always millions of people in the pools. And that's just all that's left of them. And they're just there forever and trapped. And, while we were there, um, a group of kids about our age came over and they all stood around and they were held, held hands and they were singing and they were crying. And it just, it was horrible to see that, that was all that was left of what they, their relatives that had been involved in it. And that's all they had to remember them by and just, it wasn't even personal, it was just everyone in one pit in the ground and it just, it really hits home how it's still going on and it really upset me that that's all that was left just it was so kind of undignified seeing just kind of the remnants of people's lives there's like a few things and it's just you look at it and then that really like that draws to you that they, they were people here and they had lives and they had friends just like us and they experienced that like I said the scale of it just these thick cabinets that go on for as far as you can see just full of shoes and in one of them I remember it so vividly there was this little yellow little girl she's like absolutely tiny with all these flowers embroidered around the edge of it and that just shocked me so much because I realized how little like the children and babies were involved as well all the shoes all the bags the combs everything that us as ordinary people have really silly things like taking away their hair and the prosthetic limbs and stuff just it was just completely unnecessary. It really gave you a feel for kind of, it wasn't just a killing thing. It was, it became unnecessary, almost torture. 
And then there were facts about the f um, taking other inmates of the camps and put, getting them to incinerate all of the bodies so they knew what was coming to them. And just the treatment as well as the... Con it wasn't just about death, it was about torture. It was hard to realise how how bad they were living and how little pity anybody seemed to have on them. And kind of the feeling of you wish you could do something but obviously you can't, but it's kind of not being able to escape it because it, it's there. The last gas chamber there, which was a bunker, um, we, were, we were allowed to go inside it. And it was weird going in there because you know that's the place where thousands of men, women and children have uh, been killed. It was a sort of weird feeling to be in, in that same room as where they died. It was sad to see some of the, some of the things I saw, but it, the feeling of disgust that these things happened in the first place sort of overpowered the feeling of sadness. Because if you, if you told any old person who didn't know anything about the Holocaust and you told them all the things about it, they wouldn't believe you because it's such an unbelievable uh, atrocity that happened. It's like I sort of learnt to listen to these things and comprehend like the, the large scale things. It was incredible to have stood where millions of people were killed unjustly and I think, I think it was the atmosphere of being there um, and, and looking up at the little hatch where they put the gas in, put the Zyklon B into these chambers and seeing the furnace in the, in the adjacent room to it, that, that was very emotional seeing that. It, it made me question why anyone would feel so much hate towards a human being like that. I found that I reacted with kind of a sorrow and a longing to wish and a wish that I could help. Um, yeah, I think it was important that we went on it. What some people don't like sort of believe you and uh, when you try and explain it to them it's really hard to because you can't really imagine it unless you go there yourself. I think it's really important that yeah, that I went on this emotional journey because it makes you realise in one way how lucky you are that we have all these rights and it's such an important part of our history in Europe and I think the more people that see it, the more people that understand it, um, I hope maybe that will hope, um, help it from happening again. It was only after I thought about everything that I realise what I just experienced. It, it was amazing the the power of it all. Yeah. The Holocaust was a horrible event in history and if we don't learn from our mistakes in the past then they can become our future. We need to improve our education and society if people serious, seriously believe that Holocaust and genocide is acceptable in the world we live in today. No one's learned from the past about how they, it doesn't ever come to anything good and it doesn't solve the issues that they want to solve and it doesn't create the vision of perfection that they have and just continues with a horrific, imperfect situation for everyone. Nobody in the world deserves to die. It's an innocent people especially and I think we need to work to stop it. I would say that people need to stop fooling themselves that things like this won't happen to them or won't happen in their lifetime because these things can happen and it's just it's more it's important that we are aware of this so that we can stop it in the future and that murder is no way to solve conflict enough people in the world have suffered enough innocent people have died we don't need any more brutal and harsh unjust killings Nothing is comparable to the Holocaust and its still ongoing effects. It shows us just what the human race is capable and incapable of doing.